Joining our discussion now, Jason Zanchin, the politics editor at theroot.com and a professor of politics and media at Morgan State University. He's also an MSNBC contributor. And Neera Tandon is with us. She's the president of the Center for American Progress and a veteran of Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Uh, uh, Neera, we're in a moment, we're going to reveal what got the booze in California this weekend. But I want to begin with what we saw uh, just on the other side of the commercial. Uh, Pete Buttigieg's answer to that woman in the audience who says, why should I vote for you uh, when we have such great women running who are more qualified than you are? And he says, I get it. Uh, what did you think of that answer? I think, I think that was the best answer he could actually come <laughs> up with. Uh, I think a bunch of the male candidates have gotten this question, and it is the right answer, which is that uh, I think it really addresses a deep concern. A lot of women are, uh, have fueled the resistance. They fueled a lot of women winning in Congress. And I think from 2016, there's a fair amount of frustration that... Uh, uh, that the women aren't doing better in this race, that it is actually time for a woman. We have fantastic women candidates. At the same time, if you look at the polls, a majority of the Democratic Party right now is supporting men, a lot of older men, <laughs> a lot of white men. But I think it's really important for people to acknowledge that uh, the interest in desire for a woman president is deep and profound and feels unfulfilled from 2016. All right, let's take a look at what gets you booed at the California Democratic Convention this it's, weekend. It's not so hard, actually, to get booed at the <laughs> okay, Democratic well, Convention. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to show it right now. If we want to beat Donald Trump and achieve big progressive goals, socialism is not the answer. I was reelected. <laughs> Medicare for all may sound good, but it's actually not good policy, nor is it good politics. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Jason Johnson, so uh, Hickenlooper and Delaney uh, get booed for that. They had to know going into the room uh, how the crowd feels. Yeah, so in, in retail politics and restaurants, the customer is always right, right? <laughs> and these guys, they clearly don't understand retail politics. You don't go into California and say, hey, Medicare for all is terrible. Why don't you just go against the gas tax, too? Like, look, I, I, I think these guys went there hoping to create viral clips that they could use to sell themselves in Iowa and South Carolina. They clearly weren't really thinking about the audiences they were speaking to. The problem with that strategically, Lawrence, is the only person who can get away with doing that is Joe Biden. Uh, so I think a lot of these candidates are not realizing that they need to tailor that. It's not about lying, but you need to tailor your message to the community that you're speaking to. And I think it, where some of them, I think, I think Putin Buttigieg has gotten better at this. I think Harris has gotten better at this. Some candidates have started to realize that this one size fits all message doesn't work. You got to realize who you're talking to. All of the uh, highest polling uh, candidates were there in California this weekend, except Joe Biden, the front runner in the polls. Uh, but it sounds like Bernie Sanders was talking talking about Joe Biden at one point. Let's listen to this. There is a debate among presidential candidates who have spoken to you here in this room and those who have chosen for whatever reason not to be in this room. We cannot go back to the old ways. We have got to go forward with a new and progressive agenda. Mira, your reaction to that? You know, I think one of the issues that is really a challenge for a lot of people with Biden and the position he is, is he's in is that I think that people in the Democratic Party are really anxious about an extremely divisive primary. And, you know, they there's, at least for a lot of voters, a real interest in unifying. Um, you see it in polls where 85 percent of Democrats want... Uh, a presidential candidate that can unify the party and unify the country. And I think that's a real challenge for people directly taking on Joe Biden, because in such a large race where there's so many people, uh, if you criticize Joe Biden as part of the past, then uh, they, you can weaken Biden, although it doesn't seem to be working over the last couple of weeks. But the, his, the support that comes from him doesn't necessarily go to you. It could go to 
any other right. candidate who is seen as less divisive. So I think that's a real challenge until we head into the debate, the actual debate coming soon. Jason Johnson, uh, I, I got to say, what Bernie Sanders said there is as delicate a, a kind of reference to Joe Biden and indirect as you could come up with. Uh, if that's the way the campaigning is going to go, if that's as rough as it's going to get within the Democratic Party, it's going to be pretty <laughs> polite. Well, look, Lawrence, if that's as rough as they're going to get, then Joe Biden can already start, you know, <laughs> measuring his shoe size for the convention next year because he'll be the nominee. It is June. It is way too early to be nice to anybody. The party has plenty of time to come back together. They were able to come back together in 2016. They were able to come back together after Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama in 2008. Democrats need to stop worrying about how they're going to look in 2020, and they need to start paying attention to who they want to look at now. One of the biggest challenges that I see with Joe Biden, to be perfectly honest, is this it's not just that his ideas may seem old or progressive and, or not progressive enough for the particular audience. It's the idea that he doesn't want to fall into the Hillary Clinton trap of acting like the inevitable candidate. Because if he does, that's when people come for you. And whether that's going to be Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, he needs to make sure he actually feels like he's fighting for this job and not entitled to it. Neera Tan and Jason Johnson, thank you both very much for joining our discussion tonight. Appreciate Thanks, it. Lawrence. Thank you. And when we come back, Republicans appear to be under no pressure at all on impeachment. Republicans for the rule of law want to change that. This is the ocean. Oh, let's swim together.